Hello everyone! Welcome back to some more Let's Play PlayStation Torment with me, your host Tim. It's been a month since I last played the game, and I can't believe it, making some new progress, and then I got sidetracked by other games. But we're back, and it's time to explore the rest of the foundry, which I think is just this little room right here. So this even is a room. And great, there's nothing in here. Okay, so uh, where are we going in here? We know this is a place. Okay, crap. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be someone else we need to talk to in there. Um. Well, we need to go somewhere. Hold on. Where's our? What is our journals? Where's the journal say we have to do? Where's Where's our? A legacy. Okay, we can do that. That's outside. That sensory stone in the private sensorium held an experience with Ravel inside of it. I was actually able to speak to her through it, though I don't know how. She told me that I needed to find her, and I need to find her would, and to find her, I would need to find a door, know the key, and unlock the key. I'm hazy in what she said about each, but I have a suspicion I can return to the stone if I need any more clues. Take a message to... Oh, we still have to do this. So where's Keldor of Durian? Of Durian? Like the fruit? All right. Is this him? I think that was him down there. That's Theoden. All right. I didn't think this gentleman was Keldor. Maybe it was, though. Here's a Godsman guard. Nope. Natalie. I love the sound effects of this. I still have to rip them out of this area. Found worker, godsman, found worker, godsman, 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 guard. All right. Everyone here looks like they're like a Mount Olympian to me. Alright, I don't see him here anywhere, so let's start opening, clicking on doors, I guess. I'm assuming we'll be forbidden entry. Let's we'll be here. It is locked. Done. Maybe he's outside this location? I'm trying. It's just, which door do I go in? Oh, perfect. Oh, this is much quieter than the actual foundry. Sarosa, hello, miss. You see a young woman. As you approach her, her eyes stare directly into yours. You get the uncomfortable feeling that she's not examining your eye color. Her gaze seems to penetrate far deeper than that. Greetings, stranger. How goes your day? Well enough. I would like you to answer some questions for me. What answers do you seek, half-man? Who are you? I am Sarosa, daughter of Sandas, one of the factors of the Godsmen. Can you answer some questions? Tell me of your family. My brother Saros is a child of the Foundry, yet I fear he has never embraced the philosophy of the believers of the Source. My father is a factor here and his travels have led him far from the Foundry, and into the realms most mortals never even dream of achieving. I'll tell me more about your brother. Saros is a brash, impulsive lad, easily given over to his manhood. He is eager to prove himself the equal of anything on the plains, full of the aggression of youth. I believe he feels himself more sensate than Godsmen, further vindicating my belief that the Sensates are the most immature of all the factions in Sigil. Why are they the most immature? Why are they the most immature? Because like children, they do not understand that there is more beyond the world of the senses. Beyond what one can see, hear, taste, touch, smell. Look around you. You are in the outer planes. This is belief made solid. But that does not mean the seemingly rough matter can be comprehended by the senses. This is belief. No mere physicality can match it. I see. Why do you call me Half-Man? Updated my journal. I call you Half-Man because I cannot see your spirit. All other mortals who pass through my life show their spirit to me as a shining spark or smoldering ember. You show nothing at all. 
I call you Halfman because I cannot see your spirit as I see those of others. Whether this is because you have no soul, or because you have transcended, I cannot say. One way or another, you are but half a man. What the other half is, I cannot say. Thank you. Farewell, Sarosa. We gathered that we didn't have a soul, though. Wow, we can go upstairs? All right, well, let's talk to one of these guards. I think, therefore, I am. It should I be think. done. You see a competent, somewhat bored-looking guard. Greetings, sir. May I be of assistance? Where's the clerk's office? Uh, just south of the main foundry, sir. You'll find an entrance with a desk in it. That's the clerk's office. Thank you. What can I find the higher-ups? Either Sandas or Keldor should be able to aid you in this matter. Keldor's in the main meeting hall, just through that door on the right side of the main foundry. Sandas can usually be found in the rooms to the rear of the hall. Thank you. I think this is what where we're supposed to go then? Oh my. What's up? Must Good have given is done. a lecture or something. Let's all, let's all have a seat. Yes. A pleasure. Then do I shall oh, serve. Doctor, move in. Plenty of room. Sure, why not? And then we'll see who this gentleman is. Remember that life's suffering is but another test. Well, that's a very Thief of Dark project. And that's Keldor, so we'll need to talk to him. The cosmos is something. I missed what he said. Okay, it looks like he's just repeated the same thing over and over again. So, should I actually interrupt him with this meaningless letter? Can I talk to this gentleman? He gives you a quick glare, but refocuses his attention on the speaker. Shh! I'm trying to listen to Keldor. I want to learn, and you're interrupting me. I'm sorry about that. Dumb. Dumb. I really feel awkward just walking up and interrupting him. Maybe he'll give me the right. option to have time elapse? Hello, Keldor. Can I talk to you? You see a sturdy man who looks like he's just bursting with vitality. His face is tanned and lined, and his black beard is beginning to show hints of white. Hail, stranger, and well met! What can I do for you this fine day? I have a message for you from Giltspur the Auctioneer. A message, eh? Takes a note from you. Very well. Uh, you can tell him the message is delivered. Was there anything else you wanted? I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, what did you want to know? Who are you? Uh, my friend, he smiles broadly. I am Keldor of Durian, one of the factums of the Godsmen, and nominally in charge of this place, while our true higher-ups are gone in Conclave. Oh, can I see something else? Absolutely. Tell me about your faction. Gladly. What do you want to know? What are the beliefs of this faction? We believe that the universe is a giant testing ground, a place where we prove ourselves through a series of tests. These tests continue throughout your life, throughout your many lives. Each step and each day may well be a test for you, and your reward in the next life depends on how well you learn your lessons in this one. We believe that a body learns from experience, and that experience extends through your lives, making you into something greater than just a single life. Makes sense so far. Keep going. So, life is a test. We take the test. When we pass, we move on to a new form. This might be the form of an Archon, of a Fiend, or of a Power. The choices we make in this life, as always, help chart our course. Whether we have free will or not is still under debate, he smiles. Of course, I'm on the side of the free will of people. I hate thinking that my choices have already been made for me. Hmm. I have another question about your faction. Tell me of your faction's history. It's commonly believed that we were founded by Perrin before the Great Upheaval, when all the factions became 15 in number. During the upheaval, Augie of Funo tightened on the faction's belief into what they are today. She had been reincarnated a thousand times and can remember each one of her reincarnations. She taught us how to treat our intuition, 
and led us to a new era. These two were the most important figures in our faction. We have plenty more stories, but those are the bare bones. Huh. Another question for you. Who are the faction's enemies? Well, we don't have enemies per se. Still, there are some who oppose our beliefs. The bleak cabal scoff at the idea that we evolved towards something more perfect. I figure that if they don't think that there's a... That, whoa, whoa, forgive me. I figure that if they don't think there's a point, they might as well get it over with. Like the dustmen ought to. The dustmen think that life is an illusion, preparing for the big death. And our belief champions the cause of life. They promote death, we celebrate life. What could be more opposed? Well, I guess that makes sense, unless the test is simply to die. Why are you named as you are? That's a good question. Our real name is the Believers of the Source, because we believe all life springs from a pure, primal source. But because we believe that all creatures have the potential for godliness within them, it's only natural that our nickname would become the Godsmen. One more question about your faction, sir. What do you do here? Well, we run the Great Foundry. We also run Harbinger House, where we train folks who seem to be powers in training. Bashers who demonstrated some sort of special ability that sets them apart from normal mortals. Some say we do it because we want a power on our side, but the truth is we do it because we figure that's part of our tests as well. We do our best to make sure every creature faces up to its responsibilities. We want to see the multiverse move on. Let me ask you something else then, if you don't mind. What can you tell me about this place? Oh, this is the Great Foundry, home of the Believers of the Source, also known as the Godsmen. Here we make items that ship all over the plains. We're renowned in many worlds, only the best work here. It's said that we've got a staff of smiths that rival those in Mount Klangadin itself. Personally, I don't think we're that good, but we are close. What can you tell me the people here? We've got a wide range of folks here, most of whom are the smiths and the workers who keep this place running. We've also got a pair of engineers who are doing some incredible things with the fabric of reality. Ask Neil Alexander about his dream builder someday. Holy crap! Is that the secret project? Can you tell me more about it? Oh, hold on. He smiles. Friend, I can't tell you any information about the secret project until you prove yourself a friend of the Godsman. Uh, fair enough. All right then, farewell. Okay, so Done. we might have to join them to get more information. Okay, so we'll, right. keep, we'll keep that in mind. Let's see if we can go upstairs here. I'm gone. I don't see a guard by this, by this, so maybe we can. Oh, hello. So let's just walk around here. Oh, there are doors. There are side doors. There's a girl. Hello, Betty Lynn. Did Lynn? Hello. You see a severe woman with flaming red hair pulled back tight, giving her face a stretched, nervous look. She appears to be deep in thought. At your approach, she glances up and says, Can I help you with something? Uh, there's a question for you. What do you want? Tell me the project you're working on. Tell you about the project we've sworn our lives to, comp to complete and defend? Uh, no. I don't think so. Not yet, anyway. Let's just say it's powerful, and it'll be worth the effort we've put into it. Can I ask you something else? Go ahead. Tell me about the Great Foundry. She stifles a yawn. You can ask almost anyone else here about the Foundry, and you'll get the same answer. What makes you think the one I'll give is any different? Ask another question. Well, tell me about the people here. The other people here? Well, you've got the brilliant but eccentric Nilexander. The Githrazi outcast woman, Kelara, Thilden the Grey, whose heart is much less ambitious than his name, Keldor the Factor, Sandus the Factor, the two children of Sandaz, Supervisor Smiths, and a host of others. They all passed by me at one point or another, and frankly, I haven't made that much of an effort to get to know them. They work for me, or they don't. That's about as much as I care, I'm afraid. I'd rather de I'm rather devoted to my work. They work for me, or they don't. Okay, farewell. She must be a ch in charge of things. 
Yep. It's her official. That's her official title. Thing Charger. All right. This looks like just a. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, these are books. I thought these were all secret passages for a second. Okay. I hear your words. Why not? Maybe we went into combat positions in case this turns out poorly for us. Fanged mirror of Yekar Eye and ten cranium rat charms. I don't feel like stealing from these people though. Nothing in this one. I'm oh gone. no, I'm sorry, that was that was my inventory, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's my inventory. <laughs> that would have been awkward if I put the items in there. Alright. Nothing. Uh, just an empty room. That's very suspicious. Who who has empty office rooms? Just only people in the real world. No one has those in secret. Done. All right. In Godsman halls. You know we're checking it. Come on, Dakon. You can find us these secret passages. All these secret books. Darn it. All right, let's try the next one. Done. Darn I will hear you. Not in any of these. Okay, well, we'll check this last one. They never even occurred to me there might be, like, invisible items. I don't think the game would do that to you. All right, nothing. So I guess we'll return to the auctioneer, and then we'll go and see if we can find something about my lineage. Oh, I'm no. gone. Come on, guys. Someone get down the stairs. I'm gone. There we go. I knew we could do it. I haven't seen these other people, though, anywhere. Where's Neil Alexander? I haven't seen him wander around anywhere. Alright, well, we're done at the moment. We've probably found the place we need to go to done. actually get to the door. It's probably in this location somewhere. Maybe we actually have to join a faction. All right. Well, in any case, let's turn this back in to the good old auctioneer. Then where am I going? I guess we'll go back to the upper ward and we'll talk right. to the lawyer. Affirmative. I shall serve. Once again, once again, you come to me once again. There must be something I can do for you that my brother Darren cannot, eh? Heh. <laughs> the message is delivered. That was certainly speedy, wasn't it? My thanks, my thanks, friend. One more task for you for the princely sum of 200 coins. Take this handbill down to Barkus at the Smoldering Corpse and ask him to post it somewhere. He's an old friend, so he'll be glad to see it. All right, thanks, I guess. Updated my journal, I'm gone. Wow, all right, I guess we'll go back there. No, I'm not going to free Ignis. I don't even know if I still have the decanter of endless water. I don't even think I have that on me anymore. Nope. I've got no idea where it is. <laughs> All right. So, let's just move on. We'll do that later. I want to see the the lawyer for All my right. whatever it was called. Maybe it has some information. What, what is this called? Legacy? Legacy. I expect it to be late outside, though. I'm gone. So he was down here. Yeah, let's have Done. a little doodle, eh? Yeah, let's have a little doodle. Whatever it was you said, sir. Alright, so I think he. this is his house right here. Oh, yeah, we, we have that one gentleman that we actually had to do some research for us. Let's see if he's actually completed that research. How may I help? It shall be done. Oh god, that's a shadow! 
and it's hostile. Affirmative. Yeah. Insert the model's name. Gladly, idiot. Ready. Oh, it's getting serious. They're just out here attacking me in the streets. No one even cared. You've met this older, boorish looking man before. He seems lost in thought and hasn't noticed you yet. Hold on one second. Let's make sure the music goes away. Right, there we go. Greetings! The man's eyes pass over you, gleaming as he fix on Nordum. A quadrone is he? He looks puzzled. However, Oh my, a rogue Modron! Oh dear, he looks quite distressed. Oh, what's wrong? Well, uh, he's a rogue. He's a contaminated Modron. And such Modrons only drain power from their home plane, Mechanus. You see, all Modrons hold some of the source of Mechanus with, it, with them. When one is not working properly or leaves the other Modrons, it weakens all of Mechanus. Go on. When the others, other Modrons, find him, they will take him back to Mechanus to be punished. He will be destroyed. The broken Modron must return to the source. But why? Because he is not a Modron, yet he drains them with his presence. He weakens Mechanus without cause or right. He must become part of Mechanus to be corrected. I don't want him corrected. Nodrum likes being what he is. He is terribly misguided then. There are people I can contact. Don't. I had some questions. The man nods eagerly. Uh, of course, of course. I'm always most happy to answer what questions I can, young sir. Find out anything about Ra Ravel Puzzlewell? Updated my journal. Yes. Apparently she disappeared from the fest hall one night that was believed to have been mazed, to many people's relief. Records indicate that something of hers was needed to open a portal to her maze, but none knew what this might be, nor wanted to find out. You may want to ask people within the fest hall of her. She was mazed. The mazes! These are creations of the lady. You see, she takes a small piece of sigil, copies it, then uses a portal to place a copy bit into the deep ethereal. Once there, the piece of sigil then becomes a demiplane, an endless maze that curls and twists about itself. He continues, The lady uses these mazes to imprison anyone who threatens her power. Once she has determined that you are to be imprisoned, and there is no escaping them, there is believed to be a way out of each maze, but it is most extremely difficult. Thank you, Ponder. Um... Could I ask you to research something else for me? I can most certainly try, sir. What do you seek to know of? I'm looking for information on any deceased person who matches my description. He seems puzzled. An... Odd request, sir. Such a man or men would have had to be noteworthy figures for my work to turn up anything of interest. Are you investigating an ancestor of yours, or... Something like that. Can you check? Uh, yeah, I shall look into it. Uh, you should have the information in less than a day from now. Alright, that's well appreciated. Farewell. I guess we did have to pay. I'm gone. Oh, didn't we find some information for this poor drunken mage? I guess not. I thought I'm we, gone. I thought we did. Something to make him stop drinking. Alright. All right, well, let's stop into the the gentleman's office. The advocate, that's right, that's who it is. And I'm gonna take the longest time to get there. I'm here, might as well. Just okay. in case a fight breaks out, let's all get what? into fighting positions. Actually, or you get back there. Awaiting order, affirmative. I can't believe anything will happen though, but. I'm gone. All right, I'm gone. You see Lanith, uh, Ineus. He turns as you enter and affixes you with a tired gaze. There are dark sacks beneath his eyes, and he looks as if he has not been sleeping. Greetings, Ineus. You again. He frowns slightly as he stares at you. What is it you want this time? I had some questions for you. Very well. What is I can help you with? Excuse me for asking, but are you all right? You must excuse me. 
as of late, I have been beset by... Troubles. I'm afraid it has been a rather trying time these past few years. Anything I can help with? No, no. There is little that can be done. He nods at you. Nevertheless, I appreciate your offer. Thank you. Well... Perhaps talking about them will ease your mind. <laughs> I do not wish to burden you. I lost my daughter not long ago. There was also the fire, but that is another matter. Tell me about your daughter. Instantly, Inya seems to collapse into himself. Yes. His business-like facade drains from his face to be replaced with cold despair. My daughter, Dianara, passed away some time ago. Oh, did I do this already? I don't remember. How did she die? I do not know. Her body was never recovered. Inus' face turns blood red and his hands clench into fists. And that is perhaps the most maddening part of this misery. I will never know what possessed her to run off like that. What happened to her? Nor where her body lies now. You say she was a sensate. Yes. He becomes slightly more animated as if warming himself on a precious memory. She had joined them because of her gift. And the fact there was so much about the multiverse that she wanted to experience. The sensates lend themselves readily to the sharing of experience and the sensation. What gift did she have? Updated my journal. Oh, yes. Yes, nods. My daughter had the blood of an oracle running through her veins. But it was an unreliable talent. At times, she could predict events before they took place. She had sight. She could see through time itself, sift through the threads of fate. Do you know where she went on this journey? She never said. I am not certain she was capable of saying where they had gone. It must have been a... a terrible place. Do you know anything about this man she journeyed with? Little. I barely even knew of his existence until she had departed. By then, it was too late for me to have known him. Good. Then he can't know it's me. How do you know she died? It's the most curious. I went to the Dustmen to see if they had found her body, and they directed me to one of the faction outside the Dustmen Monument. A Dustman named Death of Names, I believe. He is said to be an oracle of sorts concerning those who have died. He told me my daughter had died. Tell me about this fire. There was nothing much to say about the matter. It was a strange, localized fire. I cannot imagine what would have been more would have been precious in the documents that were burned, but someone must have wanted them destroyed. Can you tell me what was burned? A number of old legacies were burned, some mementos and some other keepsakes of value only to me. Oh no. Legacies? They are contracts that are deliverable at the death of the client. They provide specifics on how a person's possessions are to be divided upon the event of their demise. I have also heard them called wills. Oh no. This is really awkward. Are they anything like the Dustman contracts? Oh my no. The dustman contracts, while they are deliverable at the time of the client's death, bequeath the client's body to the dustman. Not a pleasant business at all. But some who are poor of means find the dustman's contract to be a means of support. Ah, oh, no. I have to end up... T okay. Let's try to reset the conversation. Can you tell me about your daughter? Okay, here we go. I saw a woman by the name of Dionara interred in the Mortuary Memory Hall. Updated my journal. Yes, I arranged for a bear to be placed in the Memorial Hall. There is no body there, of course, but I hoped the bear would serve as a, make a marker by which she might find her way home.
Oh, man. Okay. Let's think about this out loud. So, we tell him we knew her, his daughter. We tell him we knew his daughter, and what does that do? He doesn't know I exist. We don't know what happened. We lost our memory. One of two things happens. He either throws me out in full of righteous anger, and good for him, or we can try to ha have him help us figure out what it is we did and recover her body. This is going to be ugly either way. Let's begin this process. It worked. Her spirit resides there now. What? What? And just looks flustered. What? What did you just say? Her spirit resides in the memory hall. I spoke with her for a time. She seems to be in distress. You spoke to her. And you seem to become more confused by the moment. What distresses her? Me, apparently. She said that she loved me, and that I had loved her, and that I had forsaken her. I see. Perhaps. Inus frowns and studies you. His face becomes like stone. Are you the one she left sigil with? The one who led her on the journey that killed her? I'm... Not certain. I think I may be that man, but I have forgotten much. I wanted to avoid this, but there's no way, and I can't keep avoiding my past, right? At some point we have to accept that we did the terrible things we did. You! Ineas looks you up and down. You are the one! And you say you have forgotten! And he draws himself up. He looks like he is squaring himself for battle. You have forgotten! But the incident was not so long ago. How can this be? I have a strange condition. I... lose myself... for a time. Anything you can tell me about yourself or your daughter would be invaluable. Countless liars have I known in my tenure in this city. In this studies you intently. You do not strike me as one of them. At least on this matter. If you truly do not remember then whatever befell you and my daughter on your journey must have left deep scars. Oh, thank God. I'm inclined to agree. Then I ask your word on this. If your memory returns and you discover what has happened to my daughter, return to me so that my mind may at last be at rest on this matter. I will do that. Very well, then. Now leave. I wish to be alone with my thoughts. Actually, hold, sir. No, no, no. Done. Hold, 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 hold. Inyas. I have something to tell you. There is a sensory stone in the sensorium that contains a fragment of your daughter's experiences. His eyes blaze with hope. There is... But in which one? You must tell me. It is one of the sensate sensory stones. If you are not a sensate, you could not gain access. He thinks for a moment. I must find a way. Perhaps they would make an exception for her father. I do not wish to break the sensate's laws, 
Nevertheless, I could speak to someone and see if something else might be done. Updated my journal. Inyas looks relieved. If you could, I would be most grateful. I will see what can be done. I would know more about Dionara, though. What was she like? Dionara, she was... Young. She had recently joined the Society of Sensation, the Sensates, not an unpleasant faction, but she had also met someone there. She followed him on a journey, and there she died. Her... He looks pained. I was not even able to recover the body. Oh, we already have asked all this. We know she was a Sensate. We don't know where she went. All right. right. Well, that gives me something else to do then. Let's go back to the Senshit Hall and see if they'll make an exception for her father. Although, all that we'll have is just her being used by me. But perhaps only I would have would recognize the manipulation I did to her. Like, we witnessed what was in the stone, but perhaps, <clears throat> excuse me, perhaps no one else would. They would actually see the conversation and believe that I was concerned for her. Balance in all things. Processing. Splinter regards you coolly as ever as you approach. We welcome you once more to the Civic Fest Hall, Traveler. How may we help you? I have a question for you, Splinter. We would be pleased to answer what questions we can, so long as they pertain to the Fest Hall or the Society of Sensation. There is a man, Inyas, whom I was hoping you would grant a temporary access to the private sensorium. And for what reason would we allow such a thing? Because one of the stones there contains a fragment of his daughter's experiences. She died far from home, not having seen him in a long while, and he mourns her loss deeply. Updated my journal. Splinter nods, thinks for a moment, then nods again. Yes. We shall allow this Inyas to enter the private sensorium. Well escorted, of course. You may tell him he has permission. Thank you, Splinter. All right. No matter what happens, he'll have closure. And that will be very important. Even if he ends up absolutely loathing me. He'd also, in a way, witness that she left me her like her own legacy, which I have a hunch was burned by Ignis in the fire. Which means we might have to free him which means I might have to remember where on earth I put the decanter of endless water, and I certainly hope I did not drop it in the Modron maze. I don't think I would do that. I think I would only drop right. absolute 100% trash in there, but I don't really know. Oh God, please let this turn out for the best for him, even if not for us. You see Inyas. He turns as you enter and his eyes light up hopefully. Ah, at last. Were you able to convince them to grant me access to their sensorium? Yes. They agreed to give you access to your daughter's sensory stone. You... I... Thank you. I am in your debt. It was no trouble, Inyas. Please go see... Please, go see the experiences of your daughter. I think they might ease your troubles. Updated my journal. Increased my skills. Let's see who leveled up. Mort is nowhere near leveling up again. Dakon is nowhere near it. You're close to Thief, Anna, but not that close. Nordom did not level up, but Fall from Grace did. She gained 5 lore, she gained additional priest abilities, and she gained 8 hit points. Nice, good for her.
And I am nowhere close to leveling to 12. I'm listening. So we should go to her spell book and see what she gets access to now. Another first level spell. When cast bear characters listening to target points and raise a spell from their going back and queen glow and the center and glows and the lost all creatures that spin in the glow. Okay, makes it easier to hit. I forgot I even had that. Let's use another blessing. It's another second level spell. I like both of these. Does this increase by the damage that we do? 4 through 10 bludgeoning damage, plus 1 weapon, plus 1 for every 6 levels of the caster to a maximum. Uh, that's not very much. We'll take a cure moderate wounds instead. Oh, nice. She gets her first cure critical or raise dead. We don't need raise dead because I can do that. So, cure critical wounds it is. All right. Okay, I think we'll stop here. I feel like we've been playing for about 30 minutes or so. I think when we come back, what will we do? Done. Well, crap, I don't really know. We'll check. I'll check my journal off screen, and I'll see what it is I need to do next. I have no idea. So we might have to be in working for the Believers of the Source to get access to the Dream Maker, whatever that was called. So maybe we'll do that, or maybe we'll... Oh, we'll go and deliver the message back to Ignis to the bar and I'll have to see if I can locate where I put the decanter of endless water. I have no idea. Oh man, I got like 54 videos to watch if I want to figure out where I put that. Alright everyone, well thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.